Growing up, people would ask, uh, what well, do you speak the language? Today, the question you get from folks outside is, you're an Indian or you're a Cherokee, do you get that check? דמיינו שהייתם מקבלים שכר על היותכם אתם. כל שישה חודשים, כמו שעון, הכסף מופיע בחשבון. הייתם נהנים יותר מהחיים? לפני עשרים שנה החליט שבט הצ'רוקי לעשות בדיוק את זה. לתת לכל חברה וחבר בשבט שני צ'קים בשנה, רק בגלל היותם צ'רוקי. Yeah. Yeah. The $595. <laughs> We were rich. Yeah, I thought I was rich at that time because I was just in school, mm -hmm. just had a baby, no job. It was hard for me back then to pay a $60 house payment. $60. Yeah. And I couldn't do it. Thank God that our tribe has given us some money off the casino because it helps. Yeah. ב-1988 נחקק חוק ההימורים בארצות הברית. החוק נתן לשבטים אינדיאנים את האפשרות לפתוח קזינו בתוך השמורות שלהם. עשר שנים לאחר מכן, שבט הצ'רוקי פתח גם הוא קזינו. לא בדיוק תגמול הולם למאות שנים של דיכוי, אבל אתם יודעים איך זה. division in the gaming profits, uh, half going to distribution to every enrolled member in the form of a per capita check. Uh, the other half would go to tribal government to operate tribal programs. So yeah, twice a year, the tribal members in the Eastern Band receive, uh, we call them per capita checks. It, it's really hard to talk about the casino and all that. I've heard it said whatever happened in the past happened, whatever atrocities were committed, whatever happened, it's okay because they have casinos now. They only see the dollar signs. מאז שתוכנית חלוקת הרווחים התחילה ב-1997, סכום הצ'קים גדל עד בערך 12,000 דולר בשנה, או 1,000 דולר בחודש. רק לצורך השוואה זה משהו כמו 3,385 שקלים לחודש. לא רע. First distribution, we got it in December, and I remember thinking the first thing that came into my mind was, we're going to have a great Christmas, my kids are going to have a good Christmas this year. I think at first it's like Christmas when you get it, but then uh, the challenge comes with making sure that what we're providing is a need and not necessarily trying to fulfill everybody's wants. I don't think it's uh, inappropriate to necessarily think, well, there will be certain people that will do fill in the blank if you give them money, and that's accurate. Those issues, addiction and so forth, are amplified a little bit here on the boundary because there is, you know, uh, disposable income. Uh, with which to do that, but those problems exist everywhere. But I would say overall, what, what I've witnessed in our community is that the majority of our community members make wise decisions with their per capita money. Uh, my, my oldest son, not so much. Um, you know, he, uh, he kind of nickel and dimed his, and, and I forewarned him. I said, you, you know, you, you really have to have a plan for your money, uh, and, but he just kind of, a little here, a little there, and before you know it, it's, it's mostly gone. I bought groceries. <laughs> What did you buy? <laughs> yes, yes, I paid up bills. I think that was the year that I couldn't make car payments. And so the repo man was here. And I actually got to hand the repo man money. We had, for the last 100 years probably, relied heavily on tourism. When tourism season ended in the fall, Essentially, everything shut down. Unemployment was very, very high during the winter months. But then the casino opened, and so that offered a lot more job opportunities. And there's work here if you choose to work. You really can't live on $12,000 a year, uh, although there are people who will try, but it's, it's very difficult to do. Oh, uh, gosh, if I hadn't had per cap, I would have been tethered to my job only. And uh, I, I just can't imagine Um, I can't imagine a sadder fate. גורל עצוב שרוב העולם נכנע לו. 
אז אם לא הייתם צריכים לעבוד כל כך קשה בשביל להתפרנס, הייתם עובדים בכלל? And all these women coming in and out all day long, and just, you know, how great it felt in that room when she was making other people feel good. And there's nothing like being able to put your hands on someone and make them feel better for what you're doing for them. Per capita has allowed me some pauses throughout my day or week. I, I don't have to be worried about working every single minute and, and the income coming in. I can think about other things uh, on more of my own happy moments. There was a time when I worked uh, seven days a week. I had two jobs. Uh, I was a single dad trying to you know, pay the bills and everything with the baby. But knowing that there was that a little extra coming in, um, made it a lot easier. I didn't have to worry about that second job. I could spend time with my boy. אז לא רק שחברי השבט לא הפסיקו לעבוד כשקיבלו את הצ'קים, אלא שיותר מ-20 שנות ניסיון מעידות שההפך קרה. There is a study that's been conducted by Duke University that has a, a covered a span of about 20 years. The findings of the study have demonstrated that the impact of per capita distribution to the Cherokee people has been a positive one. Uh, prior to that, we had very high unemployment, uh, higher instances of alcoholism, poverty, uh, all of which has been greatly diminished uh, by the influx of dollars into our community. Having per, the per capita distribution has definitely brought us out of that sort of mentality of being beaten down and downtrodden, and we're standing on our own two feet now as, as Cherokee people. The per capita really is, a, is another extension of Gadugi, that traditional concept that we've had for centuries, if not millennia, of taking care of each other. Traditionally, though, if a hunter came in and had, had brought in a deer, then he would take it to the old hunters or to the widows who couldn't go out and hunt for themselves. So the idea of, of, of bringing in and, and, and distributing profits uh, is ingrained into the culture even before we had money. I remember giving a, a a talk to a, to a group of college students, and they were asking us about traditional Cherokee society. And uh, one of the students said, so you all were Marxist. I had to say, no, this is how we were living for centuries before Karl Marx was even a, a twinkle in someone's eye. People talk about different philosophies, uh, or outlooks of culture, or things. We have the seven generations rule, that if there's a big decision to be made, it's not about how this affects me. It's not how it affects my child or my grandchild. We have to think seven generations ahead. How does it affect the seventh generation? It seems like a lot of the world is about becoming something. We're always out chasing the brass ring, chasing that next, next thing. There's something to be said for being. If you spend your life trying to become something, then what are you? Yeah. Hey.